it's the August recess for Congress, so that means many of our elected officials are back home. And we are joined by Oregon Senator Ron Wyden, and we want to talk to you first, thank and thank you. you for being here, thank you. Uh, about the wildfires which yes. are raging, and you um, work to to try to fix the wildfire funding crisis. Is that legislation coming into effect? Is it affecting things now? In, in the short term, Senator Mike Crapo, he's the Republican from Idaho, he and I t were able to take two steps. Extra money to fight the really big fires that we're getting right now. So that is very important. And then we ramp in to the long-term strategy, which is to end fire borrowing and focus on prevention. But let me tell you something, I just came from uh, Southern Oregon not very long ago, and I'm telling you, you've got kids and seniors afraid of opening the door because they're concerned they're going to choke on smoke. And my sense is all over the West, if this continues, we are going to have clean air refugees where you have people traipsing around just trying to find well, clean air. There's new science that says that maybe we should let these fires burn. What are your thoughts? My sense is you do not want members of the United States Senate to uh, manage forest fires from their office. I mean, the reality is what people like me ought to be doing is backing the science, and there is emerging science here that there is a role for these burns. I mean, maybe it's um, in the colder weather periods. There are a variety of different te techniques, but I'm going to follow the science and not try to micromanage uh, the Forest Service. Well, what are some prevention projects that the Forest Service should be working on? Well, Vicki Christensen, the new head of the Forest Service, at my request in a little more than a week, will be outlining the next steps for the agency. And to me, the top priority ought to be to go in there and clean out the hazardous fuels. These are the dead and dying materials. They get hot and dry. You have a lightning strike. All of a sudden, you got an inferno on your hands. So in about a week, we'll figure that out. A little over we'll a week. At, at my request, Ms. Christensen and I and several others will be announcing the plan. we got about a minute left. Let's switch to presidential politics. Yeah. President Trump did an about-face over the weekend about that meeting his son had with a Russian operative um, in, in New York. You're on the U.S. Intelligence Senate Committee. Um, what do we make of this? Well, I can't get into classified matters, but I said a few hours after we got that Donald Trump Jr. email when it was made public and he said, of course, I'd love to get this dirt on uh, Hillary Clinton. He clearly showed an intent to collude with that uh, email and the president, of course, denied it for months and months. Now it's clear that he knew about the meeting. He also was involved in trying to come up with an excuse for what they were doing. So I think this is a significant legal exposure. Well, and I think depending on who you ask in the Trump administration about that meeting, you've gotten a different answer since we found out that that happened. What should the average American here think of that? Well, I, I always think what counts is what you can see. And Donald Trump Jr.'s own email reflected a desire, an intent to collude. And why the president would argue otherwise for months, and then, of course, now he's walked it back uh, completely, I mean, to me, uh, just doesn't have an explanation. Senator Wyden, thank you for your time. Thanks for Appreciate having it. me, guys. Yes. Appreciate Always good to have it. you Thanks on. So thank you okay. so much. And by the way, we did reach out to both Republican representatives, Greg Walden, and uh, Washington's Jamie Herrera-Butler for some interviews. We have not heard back from their offices at this time.